Hey everybody, so welcome to another edition of the Knowledge Graph Technology Showcase, where I go through and without being sponsored or getting any promotionals, review these tools that I have seen floating around throughout the year. I have done, at the end of this year at least, over 50 of these. So check out the playlist up above and link down below if you wanna check out some of the other ones that I have done. And today we are going to be reviewing that one. That's the tool that we're going to be reviewing today. And as with all of these Honest Review series videos, all of my summaries of the tools are at the very end of the video if you wanna go and check those out. All right, so without further ado, let's go get started. So uh, my name is Jans Aasman and I'm the CEO of France Inc. And our main product is uh, Allegograph, a graph database, where we say all the true data about patients, everything you get from the silos in the hospital, right, that our observations, empirical observations about patients are in the knowledge graph. And then the neural network can do learning based on all the events for all patients using recurrent neural networks, right? Uh, and then once you have these models, you can actually predict per patient what's going to happen. We have symbolic rule systems where we can, based on rules, kind of predict the next step in a clinical care plan or predict or, or recommend what kind of medication you use. And then, of course, and I'm going to show that too, we can even use LLMs where we give an LLM the entire patient history and it can come up with future events. If you have graph data, if you have just flat data, don't use us. Yes, use use something flat like MongoDB, right? Mm -hmm. If you if you need graph stuff, right, and you need documents, and in this case, I mean JSON LD objects natively built in, mm -hmm. and you need an asset vector store in your product, and you need to work with LLMs, and you then need all the symbolic AI that knowledge graphs do, right? Then a graph database like us is literally the only solution. So you can store all, you can store the graph, the documents, the vectorization, you can import the LLM piece and the symbolic AI. Well, we already had the prologue and the declare but, ontologies built in, right? So we yeah. have that already. So this is, I think, a, a worthwhile perspective from a knowledge graph perspective, right? Yeah. No, I like this. Yeah. So we basically, we say we provide this neurosymbolic AI, right? They also call it Compos composite AI, right? Mm -hmm. And we always do the same, right? You have legacy data in silos, you map it, you turn it into a graph representation, and then you do all the smart stuff on top, right? Well, I mean, that's, that's what all knowledge graphs do, right? Except we also deeply, deeply integrate LLMs in, in the whole part. And so what I just said, right, with the neural stuff, and I'm going to show you what we do there, we can learning, we can learn based on all the data of all patients, right? Create models. And then for a single patient ask, okay, what's going to happen with this patient, right? In the next year. Same thing with LLM, right? I can give the complete de-identified history of a patient mm -hmm. with LLM. It will apply all the knowledge it learned in the literature about that patient, right? And come back with the things that are going to happen with the confidence uh, a risk score, a confidence interval, right? What's mm -hmm. going to happen with this patient? And then uh, um, put that also in the knowledge graph, right? So now, and I'm going to show you, I, so given the patient, I can look both at the predictions at a point in time based on the machine learning, and I can look at the predictions based on uh, the LLM. Doing right now, so we work with these taxonomies, right? You have UMLS, which is this beautiful knowledge base created by humanity, right, to link and harmonize all medical terms right mm -hmm. except when you want to use it in queries you now and then think hey that doesn't make any sense uh this particular disease has got nothing to do with diabetes right i, I say i wanted the diabetes and all the narrower elements and then suddenly i get something about stroke right it's not related to diabetes my cause hit right so we found a way to actually use an llm to uh, curate the UMLS, right? Which mm -hmm. is, so you could say the UMLS was was hallucinating, right? About relationships. Mm -hmm. And and LLM actually curated the, the UMLS. So we've been working for many years in healthcare. We had this huge problem that uh, we couldn't show this to anyone because it was chock full of patient data, right? Mm -hmm. So we came up with a, a solution. It's actually two solutions. One of them was to, well, in both solutions, we take out all the patient data, 
all the patient data, and we replace it with or synthetic data from a project called Synthia by MITRE, or we replace it by MIMIC, which is actual uh, anonymized patient data. And then we have a series of notebooks, Jupyter notebooks, where we literally do any kind of analytics that you can imagine, any kind of machine learning and LLM stuff. So now we have an, an, a knowledge graph that we can give to hospitals. They do all the kinds of analytics that you might want to do with the knowledge graph in healthcare, right? And if they like it, right, they can get the budget to then take out the synthetic data and put in their own data. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So mm -hmm. this, is, this is a new big thing, right? A, 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 a knowledge graph as a as a, pro, a healthcare knowledge graph uh, as a surface. And then this is the first time I show my tool here. It's called a graph. Sorry, it's a graph-based tool to look at graphs, right? <laughs> <laughs> so here we have the, the names of the classes. Here's the name of the predicates. And here you see that there's, we always have a, a core entity, which is the patient. And then we have the main events, which are, encounters and an encounter can have a sub event like a diagnostics but then can have a link to a billing code right billing codes are the way that hospitals uh, interact with the insurers which is then linked to snowbed or mm -hmm. mesh right or rx norm or any of the other 180 uh, taxonomies right and this entity event tree we use in many different areas including uh maintenance for health for for aircraft or or in call centers, but this is the patient graph. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense what you see here? And by the way, even the demographics is an event because people change address at a certain time. They might change gender or telephone number or anything, right? So is this, so you said this is part of the tool and is this just to view the graph with some this of the is, data is, or is this to develop the ontology and see the graph? Like what is it doing? This is a tool to A, look in your graph, Mm -hmm. and B, it's to find connections between any element in the graph automatically. Okay, so it's more like analytics and, and data viz rather than building the graph. Oh, uh, you can build the graph with it too. You can, oh, okay. And you can also uh, write queries with this. I'm going to show demo that oh, in a nice. minute. Okay, so this is the tool graph that's on top of our graph database, right? Mm -hmm. And say, I want to look at... Um, this patient graph, right? The demo patient graph. Oh, here. Okay, so I have this knowledge graph, and I want to. Well, I to make things not too complicated. I uh, demo linking patient to everything, right? So here, when I do this, it reads in a graph that I made earlier, and so here is is a graph. Now. Again, here's the classes of things, right? Mm -hmm. And here is the predicates. Um, looking at graphs like this, when you have tree data, you actually can usually do this way better, where you yeah. take any node and you make it the tree of the node. This is already very powerful, right? I can take any node. And this well, you're becomes... doing event modeling too, so there's like kind of a cause and effect going across. Yes, so but I I want to start with uh, this person J, right? So I, I look at this person J, right, and I can double click it. Right, and I see all the information about this. Now, this is not right. You see this? So this is all the, it's all the the information about the patient, including all the patient claims, right, and all the patient mm -hmm. conditions and the devices that he has used and the documents that we have, the clinical notes, and, and so all the data that we're seeing on screen. Where are we getting this from? Is it from the graph database, or is it is this a, a document? This is all this is all coming from the graph database. So this is just a visualizer on top of Oh, the... I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. So these are the nodes and that's the instance data. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is the uh patient observations, payer transitions, procedures. Does it make sense? So, mm -hmm. so so this is just one patient, right? And then this patient has an event, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a a event, and I can click on this. And I see the encounter cost, the encounter document, the organization in which we had here. So Palomar Health, right? And the mm -hmm. uh, the payer, the insurance company, Medicare, right? And well, you get my point, right? So you okay. can explore the data just by doing this, right? You can explode it as you need. Yeah. Because otherwise you see too much, right? Yeah. Another thing I want to point out, we I have also, uh, so we have this patient that had an encounter 
and in the encounter it had the diagnosis. So this is a, a, con our, a condition, and the condition is linked to viral sinusitis, which is linked to this term here, which comes from UMLS, right? You see at the bottom that this is UMLS, right? Mm -hmm. um, and But the fun part is I also have, for example, the virus database, which is a vaccine information, right? So, so it's Moderna. And one of the side effects of the Moderna was that you could have viral sinusitis, right? So there was a side effect. Or I could look here at a particular article. This is an article from PubMed, right? Yeah. That has, uh, you see the, the, the article, it's about respiratory infections and then pneumonia. Or here's a clinical trial. I could look at the clinical trial here, right? And I have a detailed description of the client, the, the whole clinical trial and the eligibility criteria. Oh, by the way, can I tell you something LLM related? Yeah. So there's, there's companies that specialize in looking at clinical trials and then taking this text here and fish out what are the um, inclusion criteria, right? To be considered to be part of the a clinical trial and what are the exclusion criteria that you cannot be part but there's no standard for that so there's companies that spend full time writing uh, regular expressions and NLP code and spacey or whatever to link together we created a very tiny program in LLM and it does a way better job than anyone uh, that I've ever seen right there well we and, and going back to some of the things that you were just showing so that that graph that this is coming out out of that seemed very instance heavy. Like there is an ontology behind this, but that's not what you're looking at here, right? No, this is the instance. Yeah, okay. I just want to verify. All right. Yeah, yeah. No, the, the entire ontology of the patient data, the clinical trials, the virus database, uh, PubMed, all of that is in, uh, and, and, and UMLS, it's all in Proto-J, right? That's just in a separate tool. So, for example, here you have um, this person, right, has a whole bunch of encounters, right? We're showing only one, right? If we, if we look at uh, patient um, encounters, right? Mm -hmm. there's, 20, there's 21 encounters, right? I'm only showing one. But there's also patient future, uh, sorry, page patient future events, right? You see. So those, those are being predicted, right? Those are predicted, right? So we have a machine. And are they ready. predicted from the LLM or from the ontology itself? Ah, very good question. <laughs> so here, right? So here, this one was the prediction. There's a prediction type and a risk score, right? And evidence. So I know already now, because I see the word evidence, that it's coming from LLM, because a machine learning model don't doesn't give you any evidence, right? <laughs> so mm -hmm. here we have that guy there. And then we have this one. This comes from a machine learning model, right? Also has a risk store, a risk score, right? So if I kind of do this here, then you see that the RNN, the recurrent neural network, mm -hmm. right, said that you would get GERD, right, based on the data, and it, it thinks it's only a chance of 0.26 that you're going to get it in the next year, right? You know what GERD is, right? Uh, mm -hmm. your, your stomach... Uh, producing too much acid right mm -hmm. whereas the uh, uh the llm thinks you have a 50 percent chance of getting it if that makes any sense it does why are they so off i mean 50 percent is a much higher likelihood than like 28 um well that's okay so one of the things we're investigating is to actually involve medical professionals right mm -hmm. Because what I really want is a prediction by the RNN, a prediction mm -hmm. by LLM, and a prediction by humans, right? Mm -hmm. To see who's 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 right most of the time, right? <laughs> but one one thing I also want to show you is how do you write queries in a system like that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, say, how many people had uh, viral sinusitis, right? Um, that were on Medicare. Just for fun, I mean, I can do any query I want, right? Mm -hmm. So I can take this and I can say select um, copy highlighted to graphical query view, right? And so now I have the patient that had an encounter mm -hmm. with viral sinusitis. And I like how it's kept the lineage of what all of this is when it comes over here. That's nice. Well, that's that's the whole point. You don't have to write. 
all you have to do now is to say, oh, um, convert this to a variable node. Let's call it the patient, right? And then let's call this the encounter. Encounter. And this is the, the sub-encounter, the diagnosis. There's also convert a variable node. And um, condition that has this code and say on Medicare, right? And people, and I want this to be on Medicare. So I now can just run the query, right? And it will give me results, right? It will write the mm -hmm. query for me, right? Mm -hmm. So if I take, if I take the, the limit 32 out, right? But then I will get 344 results, but I could go back to the graph and I say, you know, I only want to see the distinct patients, right? So then I say specify variable to select, Right, and uh, make it oh, and make it distinct. Right. So now I can run it again. Right, and I get I should have taken the limit out. Right. Yeah. All right, it's still three hundred eleven people. Does that make sense? So there's three in this data small data set of ten thousand patients. So the patient. visual query builder. This is the visual query builder, and this is why a lot of people choose a Lego graph. Right. Mm -hmm. especially if they want to train a lot of people to yeah. do that. I, I have colleagues that literally spent 100% of the time in this tool, well, this, in Jupyter Notebook and in this tool to check if they do everything right and write queries. Well, question for you. You're doing so much in the LLM space. Are you thinking that there is an opportunity to use LLMs to help construct the queries? I know a lot of other folks are looking into that. Um, yes. I have looked a lot into this. Um, and it's the same thing. What I, it's, the <laughs> same, it's the same thing what I said before, right? To, to, well, to begin with, I, I use LLM as a copilot, as a co a copilot in Python, right? I, I'm writing in Sparkle, and I say, so how do I filter for the date? How do I write a filter expression where I compute the difference between two dates, right? I mean, I could go to Stack Overflow, or I can just ask LLM and it will give me beautiful code example, right? And I get it. So that's where I use it all the time. But writing queries, you have to inform. So that's active research for us because so far the chance you get a 100% correct Sparkle query is like 10 to 20%. Right? Yeah, I've, I've seen that too. I mean, I don't know if I've seen that percentage, I think I've seen it a little bit better than that. But yeah, I, I agree with you. I yeah, think if, that if, if it's a good desperation. Yeah. I just don't know if it's there yet. If you try it on DBpedia, you can get it up to 60, 70% because it knows DBpedia very, very well. If you have your own, if you have your own database, then you have to first specify the structure of your data, right? Yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of folks train the LLM on their ontology, so then it does better on querying it because it understands the, yeah. the shape of your world, basically. That's what you have to do, right? And again, uh, if it's a simple knowledge graph, you can get it up to 80%. If it's a, this one here, <laughs> mm -hmm. a little bit more complex, yeah. right? And you also have to deal with the complexity of human life. But we'll get there. I mean, I, I have no... Um, but everyone, anyone that says they can do it perfectly is lying. I, <laughs> I smell BS. <laughs> yeah, yes, absolutely. So we're looking at Gruff right now. And, and so there's also the database itself, right? But is yep. it more like this sits on top of the graph database and the vector and like all of that stuff is just under the hood. There's no um, visual components to any of that. There's no visual components to doing the ETL and that sort of thing. No, no, okay. no. We have a lot of, I mean, we have a lot of things on top of the database right here. So for example, this is the, this is more the traditional way, right? You, to look in the web page, right? And, and look at the browser where you have the users and the jobs and the requests and the audits and the view, the server log. And does it mm -hmm. make sense? And yes. the web, then you have the utilities, and I can look at the surface stats, right? And I see how yeah. where good old we... dashboarding for a, a fancy yeah. uh, database. Yes, and we have um uh oh, but oh, yeah, well, we 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 have a uh, like a uh, all the the other well the others, right? We have a dashboarding system on top, 
So, for example, you can't what, what we just showed, what I show you, right, in this this graph thing, that uh, mm -hmm. graph tool, but you can't do this with real people, right? <laughs> <laughs> so this would be the this would be for end users where they don't necessarily need to be graph experts like we saw with yeah. graph. they they can have um, the analytic export in this. And so, what what tool is this, or is this just? This is um, an API that's filtering, and you can do you can build whatever you want. Or is this a tool that you all build? We have a we have a um, Python library mm -hmm. that takes the output of relational databases, in this case a Postgres database, but whatever you want, right? And turn that. So basically, what you do is you talk in these dashboards to the knowledge graph, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. With a superset in the middle. So, uh, but we also do Power BI and right and, and some of our yeah. customers mm -hmm. the other tools. But and the the pattern is always the same, right? Mm -hmm. So, but we make it very easy if you're a Python person to actually build build these these tools, right? And then I can take yes. another disease. I can say I'm interested in uh, musculoskeletal uh, orders, right? And uh, apply filters, and you get the uh, another distribution. Uh, of this, or I, so if somebody only... wanted something similar to this, you have the Python libraries that they yeah. can. Yeah, so... there are the Python libraries to make it easy to do this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Does it okay. make sense? Yes, and... it does. And I'm glad yeah. we got to show this part because this makes it actionable, um, you know, for yeah. like whoever's going to take the time to build something, they want to make it useful for an end user of some sort. And I like this. Yeah, yeah. So all the things that you normally, are, yeah, th that you're normally interested in, right? We we strongly believe that we can't compete with the Python data science community, right? You better be friends. So our, we have by far the most uh, elaborate Python library to talk to a Lego graph, right? So mm -hmm. given the fact that everyone that works with a Lego graph is a Python, it knows Python, right? <laughs> so mm -hmm. We make it ridiculously easy. To That's talk, good. yeah. That's good. To talk Lego graph with the our tool. So one of the things we also have is this um, play this this here, right? So if you want to know how we can actually talk in, uh, in you know Sparkle a little bit, right? Or, <laughs> or maybe a lot. <laughs> Just maybe. <laughs> right here. So we have a function, right? Mm -hmm. so, all right, LLM is not hello GPT as a response, right? So anything you want to do, and uh, hello, how can I assist you today, right? But mm -hmm. <laughs> does it make sense? Mm -hmm. But here, I say find all the states, right, in the United States. Does she yep. say name the capital of the state and return the city name only? Then state the population of the state of and respond with name only, and tell me the square miles of the state of. And in what year was this, right? And if I do this, I can click on it. It takes about, because it's doing several hundred uh, calls, right? Mm -hmm. But basically, it puts it all in the database.